What does it mean to be wrongfully terminated at work in California? People get fired all the time from their jobs, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the law was broken. So what's the legal definition of wrongful termination? We're going to answer that question and more in this video. Yes, it's definitely unlawful to terminate somebody because they complained about an unsafe work environment. But it's generally not that simple. To understand wrongful termination law, you first must understand two very simple principles. First of all, there's a significant difference between terminations that are unfair and terminations that are unlawful. Just because you were fired for something that somebody else wasn't fired for, doesn't mean that the law was broken. Secondly, you must understand the at-will doctrine. California Labor Code section 2922 details the at-will doctrine. Basically, it says that unless you have a contract for a specific length of time, your employment is by default at will. Well, what does that mean? Basically, it means the employer can terminate you for any reason under the sun, except for an unlawful reason. In June of 1980, the California Supreme Court decided Tammany versus Atlantic Richfield. It was a seminal California Supreme Court case which established wrongful termination law as we know it today. At its core, it said that it's unlawful to terminate an employee for any reason that violates public policy. Well, public policy is a very broad term, so what in the heck does that mean? Essentially, it says that it's unlawful to terminate an employee if they refuse to violate a state or federal constitutional provision, a state or federal law, or certain administrative regulations which inure to the benefit of the public. Now, that's all fancy judge jargon, so let's look at some examples as to what that actually means. If you were fired for protesting an unsafe work environment, that would be a violation of public policy. If you refuse to violate FAA regulations, that would be a violation because that's an administrative regulation which inures to the benefit of the public, you know, safe airplanes. Um, if you complain about not getting paid proper overtime wages, that would be a violation of public policy. If you blow the whistle on unsafe patient care or conditions, violation. If you uh, refuse or you complain about unlawful harassment or unlawful discrimination and then you're fired, violation of public policy. If you refuse to commit perjury at the behest of your employer, that would be a violation of public policy. Now this is a short list. The actual list, if there's not really technically one, but California case law is continuously defining what is a violation of public policy. So if your issue isn't on this list, don't fear, call a lawyer, and uh, you can find out that way. Interestingly, if you work for a public employer, wrongful termination law doesn't apply to you, even though, even though, it's all about public policy. I know it's weird, and there's a reason for it, which I won't get into in this video, but long story short, if you work for a governmental employer, public entity, don't fear. There's lots of overlapping laws that would cover employees, so uh, call a lawyer to find out if you do have a claim under a different law. What kind of monetary damages can you recover in a wrongful termination lawsuit? First of all, the law tries to make you whole. It tries to put you back in the position that you would have been had you not been wrongfully terminated. It's not meant to be a lottery ticket to millions of dollars. That, that's totally false. So what types? First of all, you can recover your economic damages. Those are your lost wages. Say you were making $70,000 a year and then you're wrongfully terminated and then you're out of work for a year. Well, your economic damages, your lost wages, are $70,000. That's a very tangible economic loss that the jury can measure. Secondly, you can recover your emotional distress damages. Now, these are damages for the pain and suffering that somebody goes through as a result of the wrongful, the unlawful termination. These are very real for people, especially in severe cases. Um, but as you can imagine, they're a little bit more touchy-feely. They're not as concrete as economic damages, and that's much more up to the jury's discretion as to how much they will award plaintiffs. Third, punitive damages. Um, punitive damages, uh, everybody 
knows about punitive damages. Those are the damages meant to punish the employer for the horrendous conduct, but they're difficult to win because you have to prove that the termination was done with malice, oppression, or fraud, which has a higher burden of proof. Um, very difficult to do, but if you have a good lawyer, uh, good lawyers can ring that bell far more often than others. Finally, you are not allowed under a wrongful termination, exclusively wrongful termination, to recover attorney fees. But if you have a good lawyer, and if you can piggyback a claim off of the wrongful termination claim, you sometimes can get your attorney fees. And, and the best example is unlawful harassment or discrimination. If you can show that the employer terminated you because of a protected category, you would bring a FIHA claim, which is a discrimination or a harassment claim, as well as a wrongful termination claim. And under that law, you can get attorney fees. And so that's why the answer is sometimes. If you ask most lawyers, these cases take way too long. Generally, wrongful termination cases take one to two years. If there's an appeal or any garbage like that, they can take even longer. But you don't really need to worry too much about the length of the case because your life goes on throughout the process of the case. What you should be far more worried about and concerned about is your lawyer. Make sure that when you hire a lawyer, you trust that person. If you don't trust your lawyer, it's gonna be an unbearable process because you're gonna have all sorts of uncomfortable conversations and you wanna make sure that that person has your best interest at heart. Similarly, trust is a two-way street. You wanna make sure your lawyer trusts you. Never lie to your lawyer. Never exaggerate your claim. Every single time somebody has lied to me, it has decreased the value of their case. The question that everybody wants to know is how much is my case worth? Unfortunately, that's the question that's the most difficult for a lawyer to answer. Generally, we can't answer that question because we don't know. There's one, there's no averages. You know, all settlements are confidential. So th there's not even statistics out there as to what the average wrongful termination settlement is. But secondarily, Every case is dramatically different, and there's literally hundreds of factors that go into evaluating the case value. Uh, two cases could be extremely similar, but in front of two different juries can be two different outcomes. So we don't know the answer to that question, but I can tell you this. If you are able to hire a good employment lawyer, um, and that person is willing to take their own time, their own money, and their own effort into the case. You're more than likely to be satisfied with the settlement value of your case. But more importantly, um, you're more than likely to be satisfied with uh, teaching the company a lesson because the employer is going to have spent so much time and so much money fighting your case that they're not going to wrongfully terminate another person anytime soon. So that, my friends, would make most people very happy. So that's all I have for you. Take care.